Welcome to another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, and I'm here with my co-host, Rachel Arnett. You may remember her from last time. She was initially a guest, but we're going to keep her around for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Because we had a lot of fun talking television yes, together, we and we want to continue talking with you, too. Today, we're going to move on to some shows that are coming up that are very anticipated, new season, big-time specials. The first one, and we can't wait for this, both of us are very <laughs> excited, is when the Big Bang Theory comes back Monday, September 25th. Yep. I'm, I'm excited always for the show. It's always funny. I have never had a show DVR'd that I am so glued to watching <laughs> that generally while it's DVRing, I watch it, then save it, and then make sure to watch it watch again, again later. Yep. And then on TBS. And then whatever other show that replays oh, that it every it, right. single time. <laughs> um, you, can't, you can't miss. They found an ensemble on that show yeah. that's really hard. I mean, there's a few shows that go back in history as ensemble shows mm -hmm. that reflect the same kind of chemistry you see here. Um, one way back for me would be, for example, Cheers. Yep. I see them Absolutely. as, as a, a Cheers kind of ensemble. Yeah, absolutely. For me, Parks and Rec, The Office. Friends. Yeah. The Mindy Project for me now as well. So all of those shows, and once again, now we have the Big Bang Theory, and it is staying on top. Yes. It is not a show that's lagging. It's beginning its 11th season, and I'm more excited to see that now than I was to see last year's season yeah. opener. I think they do a good job of ramping up every season. Um, so that you're always anticipating something. There's always something you're looking for and waiting for. Well, as we know, at the end of last season, yes. Amy, who is probably the single most patient girlfriend on the planet. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. <laughs> abs absolutely. Uh, Sheldon couldn't have asked for a better woman in yeah, his life. Absolutely. Uh, went to Princeton to do a special program. And while in Princeton, Sheldon unintentionally yeah. encourages another woman to get involved with him. Yep. And we knew near the end everybody was nervous. Yes. Everybody was worried about Amy. Yep. And he wasn't believing any of his friends that uh, she was interested in him. And lo and behold, yep. another woman kisses Sheldon. Which for me in and of itself was pretty amazing. <laughs> I, I thought, wow. All of these women <laughs> love Completely emotionally distant. <laughs> yeah, emotionally distant and clearly very intelligent. Yeah, and they're, intense. they're into the intelligence. Yeah, yeah. for Absolutely. sure, for sure. And then we have the final scene where we're all sitting there panicking. Oh, this is the end of Sheldon and Amy. We've yeah. lived through this for years. We hoped it would come to something exciting, and this is how it's going to go out with a whimper, and not such a whimper. No. Final scene is, I'll let, you, I'll let yeah. you do the big reveal, was... Big knock on the door for Amy. She opens the door, and he's there on one knee, proposing. With a ring in his hand. There's that, no that question. That he's had for two seasons. <laughs> yes, that ring that has lived in his home. Yeah, like his Hulk fist. Yes. <laughs> Just sitting right there. No. <laughs> but uh, now we want to know, mm -hmm. what will Amy do? Yep. We did not see any of her reaction. No, it, it was really well filmed. Yeah. We saw everything written on Sheldon's face. A bit of surprise by Amy seeing him at the door. Yeah. But nothing beyond that. So yeah. as a big fan for, 11 se for 10 seasons, I'm ready for season 11 to get going. And there's still a month from today. Yeah. But hopefully by the time this airs, we will have seen it. Yeah. Who knows? I'm excited. I'm really Me excited too. about that. But now there's something else coming up, you know, for, and first of all, before we move beyond Big Bang Theory to something associated with yeah. it, I want to talk about the fact that this is one show that survived couples getting married. Which doesn't happen very often. No, usually the marriage is the yeah. death knell for any series. Yeah. It, it's the finale episode. Yeah, it's yeah. the finale episode, or it's certainly the beginning of the finale season. Yeah. Um, in this case, we have... You know, we have Wallowitz, we have Howie, who's yep. married to Bernadette. Yep. And they work really well as still part of the ensemble. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we have Penny married to Leonard. Yep. 
I thought Penny marrying Leonard was going to be the penultimate episode and we'd be dumb. And instead, it was just yeah. a segue to more. Well, I think they do a really good job of shifting the focus between the different romances and the different people to focus on. So even though it is an ensemble cast, I think certain seasons were very Penny and Leonard heavy, especially towards the beginning. Right. And now it is really much more Sheldon and Amy focused and kind of seeing that development. And I think that one of the things they never lost through all the seasons is the balance of the friendships. Yeah. We don't see the friendships lag when the romance is built. Yep. Everything builds yeah. and everything wanes from time to time, Absolutely. which is what reality is in yeah. life. So that's, I think, one of the things that has let this show survive despite... Yeah, I agree. Half the cast marrying each other. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. They did all marry each other, too, which helps. Yeah. There weren't that many like outside Nobody characters that right. moved to... Kuala Lumpur. Right, right, right. <laughs> and now, another show coming on brand new, and at first, I have to say, kind of gave me a shiver. Yeah. And not we... always in a good way, <laughs> yep. was Young Sheldon. Yep. Young Sheldon, new show coming on, same people who do the Big Bang Theory. Yes. And at first, I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Not sure. I mean, the commercial's funny. The commercials. The kid is cute. He He's certainly uh, looks Ian like a Armitage. young Shendel. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Ian, Ian Armitage, and uh, Zoe Perry plays, plays mom. Yep. Who I think is a great young version of the mom. Absolutely. And I still was concerned because it's so hard to have a spinoff until. You shared a little tidbit that I didn't realize, and yep. that was... That Jim Parsons will be providing the overarching narration. And that lends it a whole yeah. new level of credibility to me. Yeah. And see, I was excited to begin with. I, I, for me, I was excited to begin with because I absolutely love mm -hmm. the idea of going back to Sheldon and the fact that it seems like it's a really different tone. It's not going to be the same type of laugh track comedy, I think. Okay. It seems like it's a lot more emotionally engaging, perhaps, than Big Bang Theory typically is, as we kind of see his growth and journey. And even the tone in the trailers was, I think, very different for me. Yeah, I don't think it was ha, 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 you know, roll him in the aisles laughter. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't sure if it would be uncomfortable, but knowing that Jim Parsons is behind yeah. it. Yeah. And I know... It's not a secret, his passion for this character. Absolutely. Um, we can trust it. <laughs> we, that, yeah. Yep. We can really trust this. I totally agree. Yep. We can trust that this, I think, will be a spin-off worth trying for sure. Yep. And now I want to move along okay. a little bit and look into something we didn't even visit last time, and that was reality. Yes. Now, reality shows come in a whole variety of... Subsets, I guess, is the best word for it. Yeah. I'm going to pick tonight my personal favorite subset, and that's one where you have entertainment. Mm -hmm. And that, especially at the beginning, it's not all about a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. It's truly by talent because talent selects those who move on, and that's the show The Voice. Mm -hmm. Reality competition. Reality competition, yep. exactly, exactly. Yep. And we have Carson Daly, who hosts, and so has done a great job. He's been doing a great job. I miss him. I still miss TRL on MTV. That was my that was favorite really show coming back when I would come home from middle school. But I was so happy when he started working on The Voice because it reminded me of that. And he's really good at, at keeping control of a very <laughs> wild, yeah. huge theater setting. Yeah. I mean, that is one major arena. And a lot of big personalities. He's able to kind of wrangle. Yeah, I, he has a magical lasso. I'm convinced of it. There's, <laughs> exactly. there's, no other, there's no other reason. And by the way, this show is also coming back Monday on September 25th okay. yes. for its new season. And the stars who will be selecting their teams of voices <laughs> is once again Blake Shelton, of Always. course. Always. And then the anchor at the other chair, far chair, is Adam Levine. Absolutely. But the two in the middle, and this is very intriguing to me, we have Molly Cyrus, Miley Cyrus, sorry, Molly, Miley Cyrus, and 
Jennifer Hudson. Who just everyone pick Jennifer Hudson. I don't care. I don't care if you're a country singer. I don't care if you're an EDM DJ. Pick Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> she is incredible. I mean, I would just love to sit and I'm not a singer for five minutes and ask her advice on, on singing because <laughs> to me, she would really be the penultimate person mm -hmm. on performance singing. Yeah. And she can do anything. She's done Broadway. She's done reality performance shows and had a tough time with them. She went out so early when she was on American Idol. Yes. And boy, did she show them. <laughs> exactly. Because next year, I believe it was, she had an Oscar yep. for a major role. It was really Where soon singing after. was the moment. Exactly. The was moment. She, was she kind of out saying Beyonce? That was kind of a thing. I, I, I thought so. <laughs> Which I, is really hard to do. And in case you don't know what we're talking about, yeah. Jennifer Hudson was the introductory star in the movie Dreamgirls. Yes. Happy opposite White. Beyonce. Yep. And boy, when she sang a song, all oh, you, you were mesmerized. Mm -hmm. I remember, I've never cried in a movie theater musical before, and I cried at the end of, and I'm telling you I'm not going, just the final pan out, tears just streaming down my face. And, and, it's, and I'm not a crier either, but when yeah. she sings that song, yeah. Ugh. she brings the emotion, she brings yep. the performance. And I think if she brings that advice to the yes. talent she's mentoring and gives them some of what she does clearly naturally. I yeah. mean, there's natural talent. It just seems talent. like it's just who she is. But if she can somehow share that and impart mm -hmm. that with the people who she's mentoring, I think she has a good chance oh, yes. of having Adam Levine and Blake Shelton sitting on their hands when that final trophy is awarded. Yep. Because if she can get the singers to select her, oh, then she could mold them into amazing talent. I, I usually, you know, you, you of course imagine yourself, if I was a contestant, who would it. I pick? And in the past, it actually probably would have been Miley or Alicia Keys um, from the more recent judges. There, But there's, you know, the back and forth of, well, Adam's won a couple of times, or Blake's won. No, no competition, <laughs> hands down, Jennifer Hudson. I want her career. I want, just please. Jennifer Hudson, all the way. And Rachel sings. So this is, <laughs> this is coming from not me, who wishes she sang, and does a great job. I am a shower singer to beat the band, but <laughs> Rachel actually will sing in public and not be afraid of it. And maybe at the end of the show, she can go out with a little <laughs> note or two, but well, I won't twist her arm on that one. <laughs> I, won't, I won't pressure her. <laughs> And then my other flip side of what I still consider reality, and I know yeah. it's a stretch, but it's real. And that it's, it's, it's <laughs> we can go with it. A little bit, a little <laughs> bit. I consider certain game shows like Jeopardy yeah. real. It felt like one when Ken Jennings was on, and we were all cheering for this carrot, cheering for him. And, and you're calling him. him a character, but he's I actually, know, he's, he's really Ken Jennings. But he's, but he's really, he, I know. <laughs> that's who he is. And... When I watch Jeopardy, and yes, that's another addiction of Carolyn Topol, I know, full disclosure, DVR Jeopardy and watch it at the same time. <laughs> yep. And sit there and say, I knew that answer. <laughs> it's usually five minutes later where they're on like six categories later, and yeah. I, then I'm saying, I knew that answer. I knew that answer. But the thing that I like about a show like a Jeopardy, and that I think it keeps game shows alive, which I, I would hate to see leave the air. Yeah. Um, is that it really does give credence to intellects. Absolutely. You know, you have to be a very bright person mm -hmm. and also be very fast. In yeah, to be able to recall quickly sometimes. It'll take me 10 seconds to get to an answer and there are, <laughs> there are three questions. And then the other piece of, me for me, for, piece of it for me is the hand-eye coordination. I can't imagine, okay, I'm reading a question. I got the answer, and now i got to click the buzzer before two other people do. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I would forget, or I would be, you know, a button masher. Button masher. Oh, I like that name. I never heard of that before. Button masher. Okay, oh, I'm yeah. going to call them button mashers from now on. It's a video game term. Oh, uh, well, and once again, not the video game girl that I should be. I play a couple, but not many. Yeah. But the other thing is, I think it's also enabled game shows to begin their resurrection. Mm-hmm. They're starting to come back. Uh, you know, there's been the Game Show Network for a while, Absolutely. but I think it's sort of been um, taking a back seat. But all of a sudden in primetime, 
We saw the pyramid game come back. Mm -hmm. um, family feud is coming back bigger than ever. Absolutely. And you know, even the Price is Right is getting more attention yeah, than I think it has in a while. Followed yeah. by Let's Make a Deal of all shows, the resurrection of Let's Make a Deal <laughs> with Wayne Brady. With Wayne Brady. <laughs> oh, good who I personally saw on Broadway in Kinky Boots, so seeing Wayne Brady as a host on a game show cracks me up. It, it's so perfect. To, he's, he should host everything. He's, an, he's a total entertainment package also. Absolutely. We're seeing a lot of total entertainment yeah. packages take on roles you wouldn't expect, and I think that's why these shows are getting so, so much attention and good ratings. Yeah. And good ratings. Absolutely. Um, and in other shows that have good ratings right now and have really taken the airwaves by storm, are the British shows from PB that are being shown on PBS. Yep. We know there are British shows on the BBC channel. Absolutely. And those are great. We could do like a show each on every single one. <laughs> They're exactly. all amazing. But now PBS and the Masterpiece series has really taken hold of these shows. And sometimes we're seeing them like a year after they've aired in, yeah. in England. Yep. But for those of us who are not trying to stream them on their computer, when they air, which I'm one of them, mm -hmm. we're seeing these shows, and I think, I could be wrong, now I know Masterpiece has been there for a long time, but I think the really big buildup of this started with uh, the hook of Downton Abbey. I think, I mean, everyone was talking about Downton Abbey. People who've never watched any British series were watching Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, Abbey yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and there's been satires about Downton <laughs> Abbey, and I have a children's book at home that's yep. a cutesy children's book based on Downton Abbey. Saturday Night Live did sketches. I, there's not enough that yeah. could be said about Downton Abbey. And it lasted more than most um, British show, series do. Oh, absolutely. Because typically a British series is two or three seasons in the past. Two or three seasons of six episodes. Yes, yeah. that's true. They also have very short seasons called series. Their, yeah. their season is called a series. For anybody who ever hears a British person discussing a season, <laughs> and they call it a series, and you're confused, there's only going to be six episodes. No, that's a season yep. in, in the United States. But they have short seasons. Yep. But now they're having multiple seasons, and I think it's the American invasion. I think we're yeah. seeing, you know, how the Beatles came exactly. in 1964. The new wave. Now we have the wave of British television. Well, and it's funny because British actors are now playing British characters again because for a while it was all of the British actors coming in and playing American characters. Abs yeah, absolutely, and for sure. Now they get to stick with their natural accent. That was one thing I always remembered is when I would see a British actor interviewed and I'd go, because I didn't realize. Yeah. And there were so many of them, I thought, oh my goodness. And now we're seeing them in their own environment. Yep. Yeah, I'm not necessarily in their own environment yeah, at the time. Exactly. Downton Abbey was 100 years ago almost. Period piece. Right, yeah. right. right. Um, but a more natural accent or something closer to their natural accent. And, you know, you could see how beautifully these shows are scripted. And these, are, of course, are oh, scripted absolutely. shows and well-scripted shows. Yeah. The writing is just on a different level. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant writing. There is no commercial. Mm-hmm. And they run it like a movie. Yep. Now, granted, of course, it's edited. Um, you're not running it like a, a, a movie that's nonstop. But they film each episode. And when they put it together, I feel like I'm watching a truly contained film every episode yep. I see. There, there's less of the crossover between episodes a lot of the time. Um, you can almost, um, I have a friend who's watching a British series called Vera, which is a detective story, and she went through the descriptions and picked the ones she wanted to watch first, and they're all out of order because there isn't necessarily that episodic, chronological and factor that, that a lot of U.S. shows have where if you miss one episode, you have no idea who these ten characters are. That, that's true. That's true. I, I totally agree with that. And I also would like to add that other shows, for example, Endeavor, mm -hmm. Now, at first, I didn't realize when I was engaged in Endeavor, and I'm a mystery buff. Um, I, I'm an Agatha Christie buff as a reader, and I am somebody who likes to write, mm -hmm. and I even wrote a mystery once. But I'm engaged in watching mysteries, and mysteries yeah. on television 
unlike many mysteries now in the theaters, are not about blood and guts, but truly about the thought process, once again, yeah. in thinking out how did it happen, why did it happen, and absolutely. the old Sherlock Holmes method. Yeah, absolutely. And Endeavor turned out to be a spinoff, which I had no idea, of Inspector Morse. Because oh, at the end of the okay. first season of Endeavor, we learn that Endeavor's last name is Endeavor Morse. It takes place <laughs> in the mid-60s when Morse first came yep. to become a detective. And long before he got elevated, he was the lowest level in the department, yep. and he got told he was the lowest level many <laughs> times. <laughs> Yet you could see the thinking process that would have led to becoming Inspector Morse yep. as an older, more sophisticated detective inspector um, in his senior years before yep. he retired, it, which BBC and the way British television works brought us to that place before they gave us Endeavor. Morse really yep. retired. Then a little bit later, I see the show Endeavor. looks intriguing. <laughs> surprise! The actors look interesting <laughs> and surprise. The end of the first episode, you're like... I'm seeing Morris from the beginning, and it's good. Yeah. And it's good. Um, another BBC show, Not a Mystery, like Downton Abbey is Not a Mystery, starred an American actor, Jeremy Piven, mm -hmm. and that was Selfridges, about the rise of the real-life department store Selfridges yep. in England, in London, uh, about a, an American family from Chicago who moved to England to become the kings of the department store chains, yep. or the king, specifically. The king, yeah. He became the king of the department stores there. And just so much wonderful stuff coming from Masterpiece Series and the Brits. Keep a lookout. Don't be afraid <laughs> to turn on PBS. You're not going to be getting only educational programming. You are getting that's not entertaining, which is what it was many, many, many years yep. ago. But now it's great programming, really well done, really well scripted. Absolutely. No question about it. No question about it. And now there's a show you wanted to convince me, and we're going to start including this a little bit as we go on in this, uh, in Carolyn Talks Television, where we try to convince each other to watch a show neither of us have barely even, not even seen or barely heard of. Yeah. So I'll let you go first. Okay. So, Carolyn? You have to watch Sense8 on Netflix. You have to watch it. Okay. It is a series brought by the Wachowski siblings um, who put together the Matrix series. Is probably what they're most familiar, people are most familiar that with I'm them familiar for. with, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but they add so much color and life. And the basic idea of the show, I don't want to give anything away, is that there are these eight people in all different parts of the world, Korea, um, and Germany, and Iceland, and Chicago, as you mentioned Chicago, that are all connected in some way, and India, and trying to figure out how they're connected. And one of the things that's cool about the way they're connected is they can borrow gifts from each other. So if one of them is in, is in a lot of trouble, they can pull from the Chicago police officer who can help them figure out how to get out of that situation. Um, one of them is a hacker, and it's She's absolutely brilliant. Another thing that's great about the show, um, specifically that character, is it's a trans female character. Um, they have okay. gay characters. They have all different races, religions. It's one of the most inclusive shows I've ever seen. And at the end of the day, it's all just about love and being good to other people and the connections that we can find with other people. And I know, I know you would love this show. And everyone should watch it. Watch Sense8. Um, it just finished up a uh, season, and it wasn't going to get renewed on Netflix. So there's a huge petition right now, uh, but other sites are potentially offering to host the last season. Um, okay, so if you're a Netflix viewer, try yes. to go to tune into Sense8. It's S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, the number, number eight. eight. Yes. On Netflix. I and, have Netflix. And I by think the way, Daryl Hannah, Naveen Andrews are also in it. Really? Oh, yes. 
Okay, so now you're name dropping. So <laughs> you know, now I'm going to have to tune in. Okay, okay. Because, I mean, I could mention Brian J. Smith, but he's a big sci-fi person. I know you're not necessarily okay. a huge But I know the star. name, yeah. sort of, kind of, kind of, sort of. Exactly. No, but Daryl had his name. Yeah, that's kind of hard that's to miss. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. You had your chance, and now I'm going to tell you. Show coming back September 10th. So you don't have too long to just get to, started, okay. but it's on On Demand. If you miss the first episode of any season of this, you'll pick it up on demand. Okay. On Stars, Outlander. Okay. Outlander. I've Everybody's, heard of the name, okay. and I know nothing about the Now, show. I didn't read the book, mm -hmm. or books, if there's more than one. I, I apologize if there's more than one, but I don't know of them. I've never read it, but I was told by a friend, you have to watch this show. You have to watch this show. This show is about a woman who can go from her version of the present, which is, I would say, about 30 years ago for us. Okay. But her version of the present, and she accidentally falls through a stone, which is a portal to the past. I, already, I love time travel shows. Yeah, well, this is totally time travel, but ends up reluctantly at first falling in love with someone in the past who turns out to truly be her soulmate. Oh, wow. And she is able to return to the present, not necessarily willingly, a couple of times, but it's a real problem for her because her husband is not thrilled with what's going on in her <laughs> life because he has found out that she has fallen in love. Oh, so she's married in the present. She's married in the oh. present. Oh, wow. And okay. she comes back from the past. With, and I won't go too much, but yeah. she was pregnant at one point when she came oh, back no. from the past. <laughs> I could see why that would be uncomfortable for the husband. It would be. <laughs> and now we have so much more to talk about, and I hope you'll try out, Lander. I will. And I, I will. hope you've enjoyed this episode of Carolyn Talks Television with myself, Carolyn Topol, and the lovely Rachel Arnett. And next time when we come... We will be <laughs> introducing a couple of special guests as we're going to talk about something not too many people think about often, but the variety and multi-generational abilities of children's programming yes. that are out there in all kinds of ways now. Children's programming is everywhere yes. and frequently done at all kinds of levels where I would enjoy it and so would a toddler. Yep. And we're going to prove that <laughs> the next visit. And catch me on all social media platforms. I am on Facebook, I am on Twitter, and I hope to see you all really soon again.